Let's see. We have driven the six cylinder version, 365 horsepower, of the Kia Stinger, which is called the GT. And I don't know when you're seeing this, but we've also driven the four cylinder, the 255 horsepower. So, really, what is left to do with the Kia Stinger? Oh, I know. looked all over the country to find a place that had the conditions. Did you really? Yeah, it's good. Well, we tried to activate some snow events and, uh, oops, no snow. <laughs> so you need a place high enough, cold enough, yeah. enough annual snowfall. This year was really light on snowfall for Crested Butte. Incredible. And, all and, of Colorado. Yeah, and, and look at this. So we've got all the electronics on right now. Okay. And one of the things I always talk about, when you talk to people about driving smooth, they think you're trying to ruin their day and like keep them from having fun. It is amazing. But it gives you a clue where that limit is. And the smoother you are, the more gradually you bump up against. And so I've, I've got full throttle, but because I got some steering in, it's pulling because it's already getting feeling some slip at the front wheels. Okay. And so... So in this mode, we still have a good amount of power going to the front wheels. Well, you have a good amount of power going to the front wheels, assuming they're not slipping. So it's um, like right now, full throttle full throttle but it won't it won't, it won't you know eventually you can side. overpower it then it shifted some to the rear wheels uh with the diffs and so um so that's a lap got a good nice long straightaway here but it just shows you it's one of the driving principles we talk about if you turn the wheel at all from straight you can't stop nearly as fast it's a great thing to remember if you're ever on the road in a panic situation i like to brake as hard as i can at the obstacle until I have to commit one way or the other. Because if, if it's a logic spinning. logic is you're getting more traction. You're not tr fighting the planes yeah, of motion. If you, have, if you have a little bit of steering in, the ABS is going to have to pull braking out because you don't have as much grip because mm -hmm. you're doing some turning. And so that's that's the thing that can help everyone. Brake in a spinning car, you commit left, sometimes it eventually goes left. So I brake it hard, really hard until I have to commit. That's Just a really good top straight, tip. Straight wheel, it's a great top tip. So I'm gonna switch to- Or a TK tip. A TK top there, tip, there, there, there you we go. go. Um, and the same thing applies with throttle. Come out of this corner, you saw how I had full throttle, but because I had too much wheel in. Yeah. The more you can open your hands, the more you can accelerate. So that's kind of, it's you know, a lot of the driving schools talk about a string between the throttle and the steering wheel or the th uh, steering wheel and the brakes. Explain the open hands part of it more. Well, you know, you got to turn the wheel to get through a corner, but yeah. the bigger the radius you can do, the faster you can go through a corner. So that's why you see guys line up all the way to the right, clip the apex, and then unwind the wheel coming out. So you, in the right now, you want no excel, no decel. And so it's so slippery coming up with a hill there, but coming out of the corner, you want to find your exit, feed the throttle in, and unwind the hands as much as you can. Now, I want to be back over there, so I unwound them too much. But you're, that's what you're always kind of trying to balance between how much steering, how much road you use, setting up for the next corner. You can feel. Now, I've still got a good bit of assist yeah. from the brakes. What it's trying to do is when it when I get out of line, it'll grab one brake or the other to try to bring it back in line. Now, step back to hand placement. I notice what you're doing here. I mean, you're an expert. You're a legend. So you can do this with one hand. But us mere mortals, we're trying to do input with two hands. What's the protocol in terms of how you turn when you get to a position like this or wheel or hand over hand? What's the well, protocol? Well, two things. One, a lot of people are taught 10 and 2. Yeah. Nine and three, you want, if for nine and three, you can go all the way to here and here. And then if you're a 10 and two, your hands are kind of going up and down as you're going. At nine and three, they, they, they stay in the same place. Now, if you've got to go more than that, you know, you, you, ideally, you leave one hand there and you remove it and, and then you unwind it in the same sequence so you know where straight you're is. Never going hand over hand. Well, you sometimes you have to, but you want to, you, you don't want to just shuffle unless you know where straight is. Okay. So that's that's the key thing in a big slide. To come out of the slide, you gotta know where straight is. Got it. And so by handing it off, so to speak, in a deliberate way, that helps you do that. So, okay. Um, and you see how much road the car uses up. Um, so you're not afraid to use the width of the, of the course? No. Now, eventually, 
when I start using up, it's so wide here, I don't get worried until I get, you know, I see things tracking the wrong way. The ABS is so much better than a good driver because it can break one wheel more than the other, the front axle more than the rear. And so here it's just discipline. You see the car sliding up. Break in a straight line, get to the right speed, float it in, you know, the, the more gradual you can be as you're transitioning, everything just happens slower. All the same things that happen on a dry race track happen here as well. But they how just, do you manage that when you get to speeds? real speeds well this, the same thing applies where you, you want to be as smooth as you can you want to you want to transition from brake to turning as smooth as you can you want to transition from turning to excel as smooth as you can good eye work it's 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 there's no magic to it the car does what you tell it to do for better or for worse i always say the good news is it does exactly what you say the bad news is it does exactly what you say it also goes where you're looking too yeah eyes is something where even good drivers when the adrenaline goes up your eyes go down and the sooner you can get the information the sooner you can make the adjustment the sooner you make the adjustment the smaller the adjustment is mm -hmm. I don't know about you guys, but my patience with this whole trash control business is done. Now it's time for Mr. Kendall to hit that little button. And by doing so, not only does he turn off the trash control, he sends the majority of the power here. This is basically as aggressive as you can get. Okay. As rear drive as you can get. So you see how much road it uses up there. Now I want to be going back over there, so I'm going to let it rotate a little more. Okay. What happens when we get set up for a turn like this, where it's a super sharp turn, and you've got the apex really late? How wide are you going to go out in a turn like this? I'm going to get as much speed as I can off here, ABSing all the way in, and then and then it's into tiptoe mode. I want to kind of get around the back side of this. we got a, a hump that works against you. You see how I felt like I could get out walk faster than that. <laughs> yeah, but that is as quick as you can get through that corner. Yeah. And I noticed you kept it kind of, you hit one point at the entrance and then you went straight across to the apex. See, I'm just using up all this road. Now I want to get as far back over here as I can. The sooner you can get the steering in, the better. But now I want to, if I can come up, see it just, it just will, it just like ice across the apex there. So what's happening? Are you fighting some of the systems that are still working in that case? Uh, no, I mean, they're they're basically working with you. Okay. I mean, I guess theoretically you could be fighting them somewhat, but generally speaking, if you're trying to open your hands up yeah. and you're trying to feed throttle in, you might be doing too much, and then they're going to be like, you know, they, they'll, they'll probably try shifting around best they can. It seems like a little bit more with the loose snow. Now, what is the car communicating to you when it, it the, the aids are coming in and starting to, like, rope in the fun what do you do in situations like that well i mean that's just telling you you're you're over the limit so you can it's also telling you if you're on an autocross you're probably not going as quickly as you could because a sliding tire has doesn't have as much grip as a tire that's just about to break loose um we've all felt that on a pool deck the minute the slip happens yeah it, the grip's gone so, and so abs and the systems are trying to keep you under that limit now in dry you you know there's a a little bit of slip angle might still be moving you forward enough that it maybe is worth the trade-off and from a safety standpoint it never is which is why they come in so early even though i felt like i was going slow i wasn't going slow enough now there is a strong chance you have seen me go on and on about how the v6 stinger meets or exceeds expectations. That was my way of saying the thing is really damn good and I'm kind of surprised how good it was. And again, depending on when you're seeing this, you may have seen me go on about this one. But we've got like a bona fide, honest to goodness, real live race car driver with us. Let's ask him what he thinks of the damn thing. Torque vectoring is something that this car has. Yeah. And I love explaining tech in a way that people can kind of grasp it. And the thing I, it hit me you last... You mean not in a German way? Or just not in a car <laughs> jargon way. Yeah. 
you know, people that have developed have been living with it for three years and they yeah. forget that the people out here don't know what that means. And so uh, torque vectoring, if you've ever been on a twin engine boat, you can steer the boat oh, yeah. with the throttles and by basically speeding up the outside engine. That's what torque vectoring does. Yeah. And this car grabs the inside brake, either the front or the rear, to help add, and so it basically tries to accelerate the outside of the car, if you will, to help it rotate under under throttle. Because now, what are the two types of torque vectoring? There's the brake actuated, and what does the, the more mechanical version do? Mechanical one somehow with the differential adds more torque to the outside. Okay. And so it would basically, you know, they're both creating a differential in power between the inside and the outside. And be honest, which one is a better system? The one that uses the differential, or use the brake? I mean, on a racetrack a mechanical one mm -hmm. because you know heat is your enemy mm -hmm. so if the brakes are grabbing to slow down the inside wheels to turn it now at pike's peak you know depending on the thing if it's the, the type of event it might be worth it you know that's one of the interesting things about electric cars with motors on both sides is you can do infinite torque vectoring yeah like uh that's one of the exciting things i'm not that excited about electric cars in general but that's one of the, <laughs> one of the areas that it opens yeah. up some possibilities that you can't Says do the man who got an amg black at home yes <laughs> We'll play a little more and with the all-wheel drive oh, nice. as long oh, as you have room I mean I'm using up all room I want to be going that way yeah. but but you can catch it now no, but it's fun right? oh yeah. it's it's there's nothing better you're trained to go around a track the fastest way possible so this is not your business yeah, I spent my whole career not doing this but is it fun for you oh, is it, you want to do this I mean I, I'm not sure you could have more a better day in terms of enjoyment no you can't I mean you kind of take it you got to take your hat off to guys like Tanner and and Vaughn for doing this stuff for a living. They turned it into synchronized swimming on a racetrack. Yes, true story. Um, and I did a winter program in Sweden yeah. uh, 10, 10 years ago. And I, that's what led to us finding this course. I said, that's the most fun automotive day I've ever had. Absolutely. And so um, it led us, in, like I said, the, the atmospheric conditions are yeah. the best. And you're balancing amenities. You know, you can go up into the, the boondocks of Canada. Yeah. But you don't have a great town like Crested Butte for restaurants wonderful? and so forth, you know. So everyone can decide where on that uh, gradient they want to be. It's not as fancy as Aspen and Vail, no. which I kind of like about it. It's more I, low key. I call, it's quirky. I call yeah. it the Aspen of the Rockies, and uh, <laughs> it, it kind of has. It's kind of a dick to Aspen if you think about it. Yeah. yeah well. Actually, talk to me about the business of Tommy. I mean, this is your school. Uh, this is our facility, yeah. and uh, you know, I've got a group called Radius. And yeah. We've been talking about Radius a fair amount in this conversation in terms of maximizing yeah. Radius. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's a it's our great sort of marketing pitch where we say, uh, you know, you, how fast do you want to go? Maximize your Radius in marketing yeah. as well. So, but basically, we specialize in putting on you know, just the highest level sort of driver events with you know a lot of former skip barber. In the, in the instructor world, Skip Barber is like former special ops guys. Yeah. Uh, we jokingly call our guys Cone Team Six. And, uh, <laughs> and it, I learned, I know everything about driving a car fast. Yeah. I, don't know, I didn't know everything about teaching people to drive. Yeah. And you see that in golf, the best golf coaches you've never heard of. Tiger Woods is a coach you've never heard of. Good point. And so I've learned a ton from our guys. And so I'm, I'm doing all the IMSA races on TV now got this group doing doing uh, driving events and so forth this facility is uh, a little bit different um, you know you've been on the show a couple times before now different cars yeah. but you know what you bring up a good point I never asked you how did you start learning how to drive a car fast because you grew <laughs> up in Soul Cal man you know what's funny I mean I've been I was into dirt bikes and stuff yeah my first car control was literally on a family ski trip to Sun Valley Idaho I, I'm pretty sure I didn't have my license yet yeah and we had this, you know, this, so this is 35 years ago. We had a Ford rental station wagon. And after the day of skiing, all I wanted to do was go out and slide that thing around our cul-de-sac. And basically, they had the snow stacked up in the middle of the cul-de-sac. Yeah. And it was all happening literally at three miles an hour. And I was trying to, you know, get the you know, throttle and steering and control slides. Yeah. And and it never, it never changed from there. I, I had the good fortune that my dad... Uh, started getting involved in uh, racing and stuff when I was about 14. So on his own. Not, on his own, not totally, yeah. Care. Now, even though he was the one doing it, you want to talk about someone pushing as hard as they could. Once I went to the, my first racetrack yeah. and my mind was blown, I was like, oh my God. And he saw the look in my eyes. He said, you cannot make a living at this. He was wrong about that, but it was a good advice. And he, <laughs> he said, very wrong if, as long as, you do good, 
get you have to get good grades in high school, go on to college and so forth. I'll yeah. help you as much as I can. Says the guy who just did that drift with one <laughs> hand without even breaking a sweat. While I was talking. So <laughs> hey, we, we've all got we've all got our things. There really is no other way to put this. That day back in March in Krusty Butt was a crap load of fun. And not just because we were beating on somebody else's $50,000 car on their tires and their gas on Tommy's homemade snow and ice racing track. A big function of it was Tommy himself. You know, he's been on the show before. He's been a friend for a while. He even was a neighbor back in the day. But this, this was an opportunity to do something different with someone that we have learned so much from over the years. Like we learned car control from Tommy in an AMG at Willow Springs, and now we're learning car control in a bigger car from Tommy on the least traction possible. And something came up actually when we turned off the camera. Turns out those guys at Radius, him and his partners, Don and Laszlo, they're not just doing ice racing or ice tracks or ice car control. They have taken over the AMG Performance Driving Academy here in the US. So it's not just like people like us that go in those cars. You can ride with Tommy as well and he can teach you car control one on one. And Tom, he's just, he's like this cool down to earth guy. You just want to hang out with him. I mean, that's the kind of guy he is. Very approachable. So a couple things. Number one, did you like this? This was a different kind of thing. Not the usual, hey, torque and look at the technology and let's talk about dollars and you know, I'm trying to give you something a little bit different. Did you like it? Did you not like it? Would you like to see more of this? Let me know in the comments below. And number two, uh, Tommy was telling me a little bit of behind the scenes story that he probably shouldn't have told me. And it's just so good, I couldn't leave it out. The best example that I ever had was filming my test drive show. Klaus Ludwig and I yeah. almost were going at Hockenheim in, in SL 65s, F SL 55s and a sweeper made a U-turn right in front of us to go the wrong you way. You are kidding me. And our editor sent me a screenshot of me going <laughs> like that, and that was not fake. <laughs> that should have made it into the episode. I saw that episode, I didn't yeah. see you with your diapers in that one.